All right, today we're going to put together a neat little project. But before we do that, we need to take a look at these two items here. On first glance, I mean, they both look alike. They look like potentiometers, but they're not. This one on the left is a 50K potentiometer, right? So we know how they work already. Plug one side into your plus five volts, plug one side into ground, and then you have a voltage divider in the middle. You turn the knob and you get uh, different voltages. Or you could just use it in series with two of them as a variable resistor. But what we have here is different. While this is an analog device, this isn't. This is a digital device, and it's called the rotary encoder. When you turn this knob, you are not changing the resistance. What you are doing is just changing a square wave output. This thing outputs two square waves. And if we look at the connections here, you see starting from the bottom, we have ground, plus, that's for five volts, switch, because you can actually click this, and it acts as a tack switch, data, and clock. And what happens is, you end up getting two square waves on top of each other. And when you turn the knob clockwise, square wave A becomes a little out of sync with square wave B in the positive direction. And when you turn the knob counterclockwise, square wave B becomes out of sync with square wave A in the clockwise or in the positive direction. So all this is doing is varying a little bit of a signal, but it becomes an incredibly useful device. They are used for all sorts of things. Um, if you have a modern car, that has a navigation system where you have a knob you turn and then can push, that's a rotary encoder. Um, same thing for power supplies, function generators. They're found just about everywhere. They are not difficult to read, but they take a little bit of different thinking on how to read them as opposed to, say, for instance, a simple potentiometer because, again, they're not. So let's zoom out here. and take a look at the project we're going to work on. All right, what we're going to build here is a model of a traffic light. So we have our red light, our yellow light, and our green light. And since we're using the standard five millimeter LEDs, we have 220 ohm resistors on them. Now, I know you see me use these little uh, jumper things a few times before. Instead of using the wires, this just keeps things a little bit neater to the board. So we have our 220 ohm resistors on the anodes, and we have them jump directly to ground from the cathode. And over here, on our uh, rotary encoder, we have the same thing for the ground and the positive. So let's hook this up to an Arduino. And just for fun today, we're going to break out the Mega, the Big Daddy, 54 GPIOs. Can't beat that, right? Okay. So let's start by connecting our three lights, their anodes. We're going to start with pin nine, nope. 
Am I on 9 or am I on 10? That's 10. 9, 8, and 7. And then we're going to connect our rotary encoder. We're going to connect the switch. Pin six. The data to pin three. And the clock to pin two. Then we are also going to bring our ground over and plug that into the ground rail and our plus 5 volts and that goes into plus 5 volts so that's our setup and the way we're going to work this is all okay if you think of a regular traffic light the red light and the green light periods are a lot longer than the yellow light period so we will be able to adjust those periods using the rotary encoder and by clicking it it will reset it back to the original which I'm gonna set for say two seconds per period all right Let's go over to the PC and have a look. All right, let's take a look at the code here. We are going to attach our red LED to pin seven. So we're creating a constant integer called red pin seven. Our yellow pin is on eight. Our yellow LED is on pin eight. So creating a constant integer, yellow pin equals eight same with green to pin 9. Now for the rotary encoder we're going to use constant integers again. Our clock pin is 2, data pin is 3, and our switch pin is 6. We're going to create an integer called encoder value and set its initial value to 0. We're going to create an integer called state and set its initial value to 0 an integer called short period and set its value to 2000 two seconds because this is going to be our timer and then our long period which is what we're going to be able to adjust we're going to start its initial value also at two seconds and our target count will begin by equaling the short period and our regular count will begin by equaling zero now for our setup we just need to set some pin modes for our encoder we set them all as inputs for our LEDs we set them all as outputs and we're going to turn our switch on high just so it's not floating and we know where it's at and as usual in my sketches there's always a serial begin useful for debugging now we're going to come down here to the loop part of our program and we're going to begin by incrementing count by one so every time through the loop count goes up by one then we're going to look for any change and we're going to get the encoder turn which is a function we'll look at in a second our long period will equal our long period plus change whether the encoder went up or down times a second then we're going to say if a digital read of our switch pin is low this is going to be our reset then turn all the lights on high else if our count equals our target count we're going to set our state back and our count to zero so now here is our set state this is a uh, 
our first function here and this is where we're going to work on turning our lights on so we say if state equals zero set our lights high low low and our target count now equals the long period and we set our state now to one see we started out looking to make sure the state was zero since it's changed it's now one now we say else if our state is already at one then we're going to set our lights high high low and our target count is now short period and our state is now two so see how we're doing that we're, if, if we detect this state we set it and it now becomes this state so if our state equals two we set our lights low low high target count equals long period our state is now three and if our state is three we set the lights low high low and our target count is now the short period and we reset our state back to zero all right now here is our function for get the encoder change so we have our get encoder turn and it's going to be a void function now we have a static integer called old a which we set the high old b which we also set the high result which we're setting to zero and now we're going to look at new a and it is going to be a digital read of the clock pin new b is going to be a digital read of the data pin and we say if new a does not equal old b and new b does not equal new b old b then something has changed if old a is high and new a is low then old b times two I'm sorry result equals old b times two minus one which means we went down otherwise we go up old a equals new a old b equals new b and we return the result back up here to our get encoder turn and finally we have a function called set lights which sets our red our yellow and our green states and all it does is when we call set lights and we say high high low low high whatever it just sets the pin to the state for each of the three colors all right let's go look at it and see how it works all right our sketch is uploaded so let's power it up and check it out. So there's our red light, red and yellow, green, yellow, red. Now let's take it up three clicks. One, two, three. Red, red and yellow green let's take it up three more clicks one two three so our red there's a red and yellow green so that was about six seconds for the green and six seconds for the red now let's take it down now they're incredibly quick so you see how the rotary encoder enables you to make simple adjustments to things increasing time base decreasing time base um, it's also used in like I said TFT displays uh, menuing systems because remember there's also a switch on here that we can click that lights all of our LEDs and resets it so if you like this 
please give me a thumbs up and share. And if you haven't subscribed yet, what the heck are you waiting for?